Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be working on a cheap art supply challenge. I've been wanting to do one of these for a really long time to um, really make a video that's accessible for beginners that are just trying things out. So um, I've been playing with the idea for a little while. I have a set of Crayolas and Pranks that I've been wanting to do for a while. Those are off to the side. I also picked up some brushes at Daiso, uh, the um, Japanese like $1.50 store. Um, so I'm excited to try those out as well. And you can let me know in the comments below if you want to see those videos. But I was at Michael's the other day looking for some frames for an upcoming show, and I actually saw that they had um, a, a pretty good deal on some of these watercolor supplies. They have a pack of 12 watercolor tubes that was $5, and then they also had this pack of 25 brushes, and then there's palette knives in here. Um, this is kind of an eclectic oil, acrylic, and watercolor set all together, um, and this was only $5.99, so between the two it was $11, and um, I figured, you know, I know they're not going to be anywhere near artist grade, but, you know, maybe we can compare them to some of our student grade paints and see what they look like and if uh, they would be a good investment to just start off and see if you like the medium. Um, also to help me out today, I've got this little flat palette. These are pretty common in art stores. They cost a dollar or two. And then at Michael's, I also noticed, in addition to the Canson paper, which we're going to be painting on in a little bit, let me show you here, the Canson XL watercolor journal. We're going to be painting on that paper in a little bit, but they also had this Aqua B 90-pound um, cotton paper, and um, I... I already had a pack of this at home, but I was like, oh, I didn't know they sold this at Michael's. Uh, the whole pack of 50 was about $12. So all in all, all the supplies that I'll be using today, um, not counting the book over there, but if we counted this, or I guess you could exchange this for the, the watercolor book. They're about the same price. Anyway, you could walk out of the store for around $20, less than that if you're using a coupon to start painting with your watercolors right away to see if you like the medium. I haven't opened anything here yet. I wanted to wait and do that with you, so there may be some surprises along the way. Um, I did want to let you guys know, if you're watching this after having stuck around with me all through World Watercolor Month, that um, it has been a fantastic month. I really enjoyed sharing those videos for you in the different platform. It's been three weeks of constant videos nearly every weekday, and um, I the challenge itself has really helped me as an artist. We're going to be doing one last painting today in the journal, but other than that, I'm going to to wrap up the challenge here on YouTube. I'll still do it for me personally, but here on YouTube, we're gonna get back to our normal programming next week for you and um, start doing the normal videos again. I know a lot of you are missing them and I am too. So uh, I will have a recap video on my World Watercolor Month journey on the 31st. Uh, that's a Monday and uh, we'll go through a flip through of the journal. But for now, let's go ahead and dive into this challenge. So here are our Artist Loft watercolors, and there it's a 12 color set with 12 milliliters in each tube. It does con uh, contain black and white, so it's effectively 10 colors. It is a Chinese white, but I'm wondering if because it's a cheap paint, maybe it has a lot of fillers, maybe we can use it like a gouache if it's thick enough for that, so we'll have to see. I've never used this brand before. The other colors in the set are Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Cobalt Blue, Crimson Red Lamp Black, Lemon Yellow, Prussian Blue, Vermilion, Violet, Viridian, and Yellow Ochre. It should go without saying that um, things like the Viridian and the Cobalt Blue are not those actual pigments. They're going to be hues. Um, it does claim on the packaging that they are high quality, pigmented color, smooth consistency, and great coverage. We can take that with a grain of salt, but uh, for $5, if these can get us through some practice paintings, they might be a good investment for those of you just starting off. So inside the box had this little pamphlet, and it has a guide for different brush shapes, which is pretty neat. So for beginners, it'll tell you what the different types of um, brush shapes are and what they're used for. And it also has this interesting series of tips that um, maybe they apply specifically to these types of paints. Um, it's really interesting. They suggest a drop cloth and an apron under your setup for watercolors. I've never found those two things to be needed, but uh, perhaps for kids. Um, and then it also has some information about that watercolors come in cakes, tubes, and pencils, but then it also mentions that tubes are the most opaque version. I guess they mean that you can use them thickly, but uh, I don't ever like seeing the word opaque in, in watercolor <laughs> instructions. They're not gouache, which they do sell a separate set of this under gouache, so 
they're different products for them. It has some different tips here. And then it also mentions here to only squeeze out the portion that you're going to be using. Now I'm not gonna be filling a palette today. Um, anyway, that wasn't part of my plan, but it's interesting that they um, don't want you to squeeze these out ahead of time. It probably means that they're gonna crack and dry a little bit more easily than artist quality paints would. So as suspected, there's no pigment information on here, neither the pigment number or any of the ratings for light fastness or anything. I wouldn't expect these to be light fastness, but again, if you're just starting with watercolors, you don't need them to be. Um, all it has on here is that they conform to ASTM, and that's about it. And then they're common names, so I've got the colors listed out here. Then for our brushes, um, it gives you care for oils and then acrylics versus watercolors. So here are the brushes. There is a bit of an odor to the bag, um, but that's probably to be expected. There's four different colored handles with four different types of um, filaments in each of them. Um, they come in a variety of different shapes, um, flat, angled, rounds, washes, and um, the fan brush even. And I was looking through them and I think I have four that are kind of what I would consider defective in that the bristles do not stay together. This one is the worst offender of it. I even got it wet and tried to uh, mold them back together, but it is not having it. This uh, flat brush or wash brush has like a very loose frayed edge on it. And then we've got two round brushes that aren't too bad, but they've definitely got some stragglers on them. And then the rest of them look okay for whatever their, their purposes are. We've got a couple, I think this one looks like the most watercolory type of brush, so I'll definitely try that out today. I'm trying to pull um, one of each of the flat brushes and one of each of the round brushes. Um, the only round brush that has this brown handle has <clears throat> this huge, like loose, I don't know if you can see that, my hand is too light, but the, there's like this big piece sticking off of it, so I'm looking for my scissors. I wouldn't recommend doing this with a nice brush, but we're just gonna go ahead and clip that stray hair off. So hopefully we can go ahead and use that. All right, now it's time to squeeze out some colors. Each of these does have a little metal seal and the back of the paint has a little puncture for it. All right, one thing I did misspeak earlier, I thought this was a lid, but this is a really uh, flimsy piece of plastic. So you're probably best leaving it sat down uh, inside of it. But if you wanted to, you could flip it around to keep it in there nice and well. Um, my first impressions of the paint actually are that they have a really nice consistency and they look uh, really nice. So nothing alarming there. Yeah. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of color mixing here just to see what kind of colors I can expect when I go to start painting. So here are our color samples that we kind of swatched out, and they're a little bit flat in general, but uh, for $5, I'm pretty impressed. Up here I did kind of a split primary. The only thing is I use the same yellow for both of these. So this is the lemon yellow and the vermilion. We get a fairly bright orange. Um, then we have the crimson and the cobalt blue, and that makes a nice, really soft, uh, warm purple. The Prussian blue and the lemon yellow make a very bright green. And then I played around with some neutrals over here. So this is the Viridian and the Crimson, and that gets a cool, soft gray. Then we've got our uh, Vermilion and our Thalo Blue, or sorry, our Prussian Blue, and that makes a warmer version of a gray. 
Down here I've got the Prussian Blue and the Burnt Umber, which makes a really nice neutral um, when you have a fair amount of the Burnt Umber in it. Then we've got the Yellow Ochre and the Prussian Blue, making a really soft, beautiful green. I mix the violet together with the yellow ochre to see if I could get kind of a brown tone. And it's not very vibrant, but it's a nice dusky purple. Um, so that's a, not what I expected, but a nice surprise. And then I played with the black and the white. Um, so this is the crimson and the black, and I wanted to see if the black was going to really pull down or muddy the colors. And I actually came up with, um, it's kind of similar to like a perylene maroon, which uh, is a new favorite paint of mine. And also, if you notice, there's um, these these bleed effects from the wet the wet part of the paint bleeding into the really pigmented paint that's because I used the really thick paint here and then pulled out the water and then this paper isn't super super absorbent but my point is is that I wanted to say that it has these really nice textural effects that I wouldn't normally expect from uh, a lower grade paint and then I also did the same thing by adding the black to the yellow, and oftentimes when you add a black to a yellow, you'll get kind of a greenish color, and this is actually a beautiful like olive green that you could easily use in a forest painting. And then finally, I added the crimson to the white to get this soft pink color, and again, we have those nice um, textural effects from the drying. On the back of this, real quick, we're gonna test out these different brushes um, just to kind of see Try and pick a color here. <laughs> See kind of like the different capacities of them and uh, kind of see how they do. Alright, so here's just a super, super, super quick swatch out with these brushes, and obviously I haven't spent much time with them, but this one is certainly, as I suspected at the beginning of the video, the uh, best suited for watercolor, so that's the one we're probably going to use in our painting. Um, we've got these other ones. This one held a surprisingly little amount of water. Um, I thought since it was a bigger brush we'd have more, but actually this uh, brown handled brush held more water than the larger blue handled brush. Um, Although on the flip side, the blue handled brush and the flat ones, again, I'm saying blue handled, it's the same material and the similarly colored handled ones. Um, it held a fair amount. There was a little bit of skipping towards the end. But for such a small flat brush, I think this is, it's a size 10 it says. Um, but then I also have these washes that have a lot more um, kind of life in them. So either the brown handle or the uh, tan colored handle. So. If you have this pack in general, I would say that um, the brown and the tan ones are best for watercolor in terms of just holding an amount of water, and then maybe for some dry brush effects, the other green and blue handles would work as well. All right, I mentioned at the start of the video that this is gonna be kind of our farewell to World Watercolor Month here on the channel. It's our last little hybrid video. And um, I wanted to pick a prompt then, since you wouldn't be seeing the rest of my paintings until the very end in the recap. I wanted to pick one that really kind of spoke to me and that I could be creative with. And one of the prompts was cherry, lemon, and turquoise. And I was thinking, what am I gonna paint for that? It was so different than the other prompts. And um, I, you know, I, I thought about it for a little while, and then I thought about bee eater birds, and they've got the yellow on their throats, and the red on their backs, and then the teal and green on their bellies. So uh, I decided I wanted to paint those. So I found a picture on Pixabay um, for them, and I thought I'd go ahead and give this a try for our challenge portion of painting with these. I will see you at the end of the video, and uh, we'll see how it turns out.
All right, everyone, here it is. Um, I actually had a really good time painting this. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised by how they went down, how they kind of bled and mixed on the paper. The wet and wet was really nice. Um, the earth tones are, as we talked about before, quite opaque, and so when you start using them, it's a little bit like gouache, so you can kind of see on the branches here and in the leaves that have the yellow ochre, or the burnt sienna, or the burnt umber, that those are much thicker in color and they can cover the other ones up, but all in all, for $5, I don't think you can beat this. I actually enjoyed the process of painting with these more than I did with my Cotman's, which was my first like little travel set that I had. Um, I don't know that these would be all that portable. Um, I think they're more of like paint in your studio type of things, but um, I just, I was really, really impressed. So for five bucks and then picking up a couple of brushes on the side, uh, if you want to get started with watercolor, I would say go for it. As far as drying out goes, um, some of the colors dried out a little bit on the palette and I could uh, took a little bit of effort to re-wet them as I'm sure it would with, with any paint. I don't know for sure how they would re-wet if you let them all the way dry and I'm going to be posting this video before that happens, but if you want to check back in a day or two, I'll go ahead and put a note down in the comments so you can ask me, ping me and remind me in a comment and I can let you know if they re-wet very well. All right, everyone, so you're probably wondering about the giveaway. Now, Michael's Arts and Crafts stores are a chain here in the United States, so I apologize for those of you who are in other areas and can't find these materials to acquire, um, but I did want to do something that was really accessible for a uh, bulk of my viewers and especially new painters. Um, I will be doing a giveaway for this um, set of watercolors that I purchased for this little review. The only thing that's gone from them are the tiny little samples I used here. You can barely tell that anything was ever squeezed out of them. I'll also be picking between five and ten of the brushes from the set, the ones that I think would do really well for anyone um, to be painting with, and I'll also pick you up a new palette. Um, I won't give you this one that is covered in paint, but I'll go ahead and pick up a new one for you, include that in there, as well as um, five sheets of the Aqua Bee uh, paper so that you can go ahead and get started. So if you would like to enter, go ahead and follow the link in the description below. You get one entry for being subscribed to the channel and a few more for visiting other social media websites. Due to the weight of these paints, they're actually quite heavy. I'm only going to be able to offer this giveaway to U.S. Um, US viewers just because shipping charges would be so high if I don't um, so I apologize to my international viewers. I will have another giveaway shortly for my one-year anniversary, and for that one, I will be able to include international viewers in that. So, so yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this cheap watercolor challenge in today's video. Uh, I was really, really honestly surprised by the quality of the paints here, um, or maybe not the quality, but the uh, versatility of the paints and how pliable they were and easy to use and the effects that you could get in wet to wet. Um, I was just really, really tickled by that. I hope that if you're new to watercolor and looking for uh, a way in that's affordable, maybe you can go ahead and check these out. Again, not sponsored by Michaels, I just found these and thought that they were a good value. Um, and above all, thank you so much for getting me to 5,000 subscribers. I'm so happy to be here with you all, and um, I hope that you continue to stick around for the videos coming up in the upcoming months. So be sure to comment below to let me know if you like this video and if you'd like to see other challenges like this in the future. Give it a nice big thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it, and I We'll see you next time.